Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Premiere scripting quick tip tutorial. In this one, I'm gonna be going over the differences between normal track looping and QE track looping. What I mean by this is the way you actually loop through video or audio tracks in Premiere scripting. If you use the normal uh, sort of scripting information, you will basically be able to loop through each of the individual clips. If you use the QE undocumented part, you're gonna get a different result which might be very confusing. So basically today is gonna be an explainer of this code and the results you're gonna get when you're looping through a track in QE versus the normal uh, scripting method. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can download this code on GitHub and test it out for yourself. And down there as well, you can follow us on Instagram for updates. If you're not a member of our Discord server, come on and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you want to help support the channel on YouTube and get cool perks at the same time, become a VIP, premium supporter, supporter, or member. Now, when we're first discussing this, I want to discuss the two different ways we loop through and why we get different values when we loop through a track, uh, the normal way and the QE way. I'm going to go ahead and comment out my QE code and just start with the normal way. So first here, I just have a basic script and I grab the project that's open, the active sequence here. And now I'm going to be referencing video track two here. None of the other ones, just video track two. And in my case, I have two clips. Uh, one is appearing here and the next one a little bit after. Now, if I go ahead and want to loop through these with the normal way of Premiere scripting, the way we do this is we grab our sequence and the video or audio tracks. In this case, I'm grabbing number one, which is the second position in the array, which gives us video track two. And then I'm going to grab all of our clips. In this case, it's going to give us two clips the number of those clips or the num items. And each time through, I'm going to console out whatever the I value is. So clip number one will give us zero, clip number two will give us one. And I'm also going to grab the clip name each time through. So you can see we're going to get a display here that says normal track loop start, which is good. The first clip is going to give us I is equal to zero. And the name of that clip is Saturn. That's this one here. The next clip, clip two, is going to give us index I equals one and that clip is also named Saturn. So that's all well and good, but when you're looping through with QE, it's a little bit different than that. You're actually gonna find this will loop through four times instead of two times. So I'm going to now comment out my normal code and uncomment out my QE code. When I go ahead and run a loop through QE, it's a little bit different how we do it. The first thing we're gonna do is say app.enableQE to enable the processing and methods available. Then I'm going to define my track item. So we need video track two. The way we get that with QE is to say QE, and then we reference our project, and I'm gonna get the active sequence, the one that's open, the same thing we did up here, just a little bit different syntactically. We need to give it a method instead of the property active sequence. And then we're going to get the video track at index. And the first index is zero, so that would give you video track one, or in our case, video track two is index number one. Now, the way we loop through all of the items inside of it, we don't refer to our clips. We're going to refer to the items because it actually contains more than clips. So we're going to loop from i is equal to zero and is less than our this track dot num items. Now, you'll be surprised to see that when we run this, it runs four times through. And what I'm doing is I'm writing the i value as well as the name of our track. The way we get the current clip or item of the track in QE is to say the track dot get item at and then provide the index. So in this case, we have an index of zero, one, two, three, and four. Why are we getting actually five results? We, ha we don't have any more than two clips on our timeline. So what's going on here? Well, if you look further, you can see that for the name of our clips, we're actually getting undefined, Saturn, undefined, Saturn, undefined. Now this actually took me a little bit to realize what was actually going on. But what is happening is with QE, it's giving you more access than you thought you had. You're actually accessing these empty clips between each of your clips. It's obviously not something I can select and modify, but when you can highlight between your clips, you're actually selecting an empty space, which is represented here. So the first thing we're seeing is undefined because we don't have a name for this empty clip. But if I was to just alert or console the item itself, you can see I'm not gonna get undefined, I'm going to get an object. And that object is equivalent to an empty object, which simply has a start 
end and a duration basically. It doesn't have a name, but it has time information. And the reason we're getting five results is because we have an empty, our Saturn clip, an empty, our Saturn clip, and another empty afterwards. So that's where that's actually coming from. You need to understand that with QE, sometimes you're given so much information, you don't know how to parse it. So basically the way it works with normal scripting is it's going to loop through, anytime you loop through a track, it's gonna give you the physical number of clips you can see. Uh, to loop through. If you're using QE, it's going to give you the physical ones you can see and the empty spaces between them. So if you have edits with space between them, it's going to return that many extra items for you. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's the difference between normal track looping and QE track looping inside of Adobe Premiere Scripting. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, again, you can check out this code on GitHub and try it out for yourself. And down there as well, you can follow us on Instagram for live updates. If you're not a member of our Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And be sure to come help support us on YouTube, become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP and get cool perks along the way. Thanks again for watching guys, we'll see you next time.